I want to welcome everyone who's joined us today. I'm Warren Miller, the editor of Marine Construction Magazine, and this is the first of our 2021 webinar series. Marine Construction Magazine's mission is to provide information to our readers about a changing world. And nowhere else are changes happening as quickly as they are in technology. From composite materials to computer-assisted manufacturing, emerging technology is allowing us to do things more effectively and efficiently than ever before. And we can do things in marine construction that were never possible before, such as hardware and software that allows a crane operator to see on a screen what's ahead of him in zero visibility water. Trimble has been a leader in computer-aided technology for a long time. Their marine guidance positioning and underwater imaging systems have given marine construction eyes above and below the waterline. Over nearly 40 years, Trimble has integrated positioning and navigation technology into systems that improve workflow that can give each of us a competitive advantage in a world that's more competitive every day. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Shay Griffin, Trimble's Marine Regional Sales Manager for the Americas. Shay? Thank you, Warren. Uh, just wanted to say uh, thank you for putting the webinar together and allowing us to be a part of this. Um, this is a really great opportunity. We appreciate it very much. I uh, just want to take the time to introduce uh, my co-presenters. It's going to be Travis Iapico from Weeks Marine. He's the Construction Technology Manager, and also Mr. Lou Nash with Mesotronics Corp. Uh, we're going to kind of go through and take a look at uh, basically uh, how we've come across with the the idea of uh, our marine construction portfolio and what that means. As far as Trimble Marine is concerned, we're a core component of the Civil Engineering and Construction Division within Trimble. Uh, what we've done is we follow the cues of technology advancements for construction and that we're really in a position to bridge the physical world and the digital digital worlds. And we do this by uh, a number of methodologies. One is that we have created strategic partnerships for our marine portfolio. And also we have a renewed uh, commitment to our portfolio that has allowed us to kind of step forward with the advancements for construction technology as well. As an example, uh, we in 2017, we entered into a strategic partnership with Teledyne Marine, and this allowed us an opportunity to kind of leverage both strengths of uh, Teledyne Marine and also with Trimble. Teledyne has the, uh, the background, the longevity of having a, a software and sonar, uh, scalable systems uh, available to operators. And from the Trimble side, we've always had a, a very close relationship with Caterpillar in the development of our hardware for on-machine uh, guidance. And that has really um, made a difference in being able to produce a portfolio that's going to meet the, the, real, the real stringent and difficult environment that the, the marine sounds or the marine uh, environment provides us. So we're going to kind of take a look at what that means. First, let's take a step back in time. Uh, Trimble started out as a marine company, and we've never really left that core functionality. If you take a look at this screenshot here, you'll see some timeline uh, hits for us that uh, really kind of propelled us to where we are now. Early on in the late 80s, uh, we came across the HydroPro software, and, and in the mid-90s, we started developing the machine guidance uh, platform. And from there, we developed these applications for HydroPro, and we got to a point where we really needed to update our platform because of all the advancements. And that allowed us to then enter into a relationship with uh, Teledyne Marine, and in 2017, we are now the OEM reseller for Trimble Marine Construction. Part of that review of our portfolio was that not only did we have to look at ourselves in terms of what we're bringing to the market, we, we also had to look at our channel partners and look at who's capable of really bringing this out and bringing it to the customers in a, in a methodology that can benefit everybody uh, in terms of the operation. And so what we did in 2018, we created a, uh, a level of marine partner called the Advanced Marine Partner. Now, this is a marine partner that has all the disciplines necessary to be on the hydrographic side of the business for marine and also for the heavy civil side of the construction portions. So that's really a, a key point here is that they kind of bring both worlds uh, to 
to the customer and that they have the ability to train, support, be on the end of a phone call when needed. And so that's what we've, we've been counting on our uh, advanced training partners for is to produce the training programs, the curriculum, and also to help us understand what's happening in the field. We need feedback from not only them, but also from our customers, and that's helped us develop our kits. And I'll kind of go through those kits a little bit more detail here in just a few moments. And looking at the full spectrum of what we're doing here is that feedback initially from the field was that they're looking for one manufacturer, one software platform, and one uh, person on the phone that they can go to to get the help that they need. And so from that, that structure, that really developed our strategy with how this all came together. And what, this, what you'll see here that it actually produces a very good end-to-end -end solution for the customer. So that way you're not having to pull uh, third-party uh, equipment in from one manufacturer to make the system work that just really presents too many opportunities for failure. And once you have a, an integrated solution with the right people in place to support you, we're gonna make sure that you're successful because we stand behind our equipment, Teledyne stands behind their equipment, and we certainly have our experienced uh, channel partners in the field that really put the, their names on the line as well as ours. Now, if you take a look at this graphic here, this is interesting. This is where the dirt meets the water. This is where our portfolio lives. And you'll notice that there's, a, there's, a, there's quite a few different applications here. There's dredge applications, there's rock placement, there's piling, beach nourishment, could be deconstruction of a bridge, construction of a bridge. And also, if you'll notice that the colored areas around some of these applications, that's where the sonar comes in. That's where you get the real value from Teledyne. That's a real good augmentation to what the marine contractor can use in the field so that when they're doing their work, they can have an updated surface model as they're going. So they're not having to wait on somebody to come behind them and check and see if they got all the places and they met all the tolerances and things of that nature. And if you think about that type of scalable solution, that software platform covers all of these applications. And all you're doing is taking the sensor packages and adapting it to whatever machine that you want to try. And that makes us machine agnostic. That's a real advantage because we're not worried about the machine type. We're not worried about the manufacturer. But what we can do is, is, is once you do a proper measure up and you get that uh, machine dialed in, it'll give you the accuracy and the performance that you need. Yeah. There was a question from the early 2000s that somebody brought up and said, you know, what happens or why would you want to put a GPS on a bulldozer? Well, that same question is being asked today in terms of marine construction. It's like, why would you want to put a like a sonar on a on a barge? And so when you start to sit back and look at the, the gaps in the workflows for marine construction, what we're doing is we're trying to fill in those locations where there is going to be real ROI for the marine contractor. But one of the most important things that we see here is that with, with regards to marine construction activity, safety is a big deal. And so if you're looking at the situational awareness of your crew out on the, on the job site, things of that nature, I think that you'll see that with the software having the ability to provide uh, avoidance zones and produce triggers for the operator, that's going to eliminate the, oh, I didn't know that was there or something happens and something goes wrong. So that's kind of what we're doing here is to kind of give that technology boost to fill those gaps. As a result of having all of that put into place, we now have standard off-the-shelf systems, if you will, for the marine excavator, for the clamshell crane, and for the cutter suction dredge. Now, in this particular instance, I'm going to go through and kind of give you a, a more detailed look at what this means. If you'll notice here in the top right corner of your screen, there are going to be different tool attachments related to these excavators. Could be a grapple, could be a backhoe, could be uh, a, a hammer, could be a, a it could be a hydraulic pump or something related to that. But what we're, what we're showing here is that regardless of your tool type, if you can scan that and bring it in, we'll bring it into the software. That's not going to be an issue for us. And so that allows us to keep and maintain that accuracy down to the tool. So when you start to use the system, what we do is we have a position and heading antennas on the, on the excavator for the, as, as this example goes. And what we do is from, from the position and heading, we get an orientation of the machine. And then once we have that, we compute offsets. We start at the boom pin, we go to the boom pin and for the boom uh, stick and bucket locations. 
we do a proper measure up, we do a calibration. Once all that's put into place and once you have the, the makeup and the specs for the bucket, we can get you down to the teeth with uh, RTK accuracy. And so that's really important to understand as to when that operator is doing their work, they are really at the point of where they are. And there's all kinds of other things involved, like it could be uh, tide gauges, things of that nature. We take that all into account because that's part of the, the legacy workflows and the checks that these guys have done in the past. And we want to make sure that they have those, uh, uh, those options available to them if they want to do those types of check-ins. Here's another example. Here's the clamshell crane. And you'll notice on the top right, there are some folks around the world that do the aquapod placements, any type of diking, which is the building of the structures. There's also material removal and material placement applications. As long as we have a proper setup and, and measure up, you're gonna know exactly where that bucket's at. Now, one thing you'll see here is that we have the rotational encoders. Those rotational encoders are absolute encoders, meaning that once, if they go to sleep, they wake up exactly how they're supposed to be. There's no recalibration at all. And then finally, with regards to uh, the cutter suction dredge. Now this is um, one of our first systems that we put into place. And you'll notice that in the screenshot, the operators wanna have the ability to see high and low spots. And from this, the operators wanna know anything that needs to be addressed before you pick up spuds and go. And part of that is also the use of, uh, uh, of, a, of a cost effective tool like the, like the sonars to uh, make sure that the surface model is or the surface is updated and everything looks as though it should be. And if you think about that for a moment, you're getting confirmation as a contractor that you did the work required. At that time when you finished up and, and move on, you don't have to go back. There's no more rework. And that's a really important factor because as soon as you have to redeploy and, and put people back onto the job site because of one thing or another, uh, that saves a lot of money. And of course, you might have some cave-ins, you might have some high flow events, but as of the time of that uh, operation, when it finishes, you have you know, a report in your hand saying, yeah, we completed what, exactly what we did. Uh, with that in mind, I'd like to bring in Travis uh, Iapico with Weeks Marine. He's gonna speak to uh, a background on the history of Weeks Marine and also talk about their company. And then from there, I'm going to, uh, bring up a video where Travis and I are discussing some of the off the shelves, uh, off the shelf uh, kits that they are using presently on a job site. So with that in mind, Travis, would you like to join us? Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Travis Iapico. I've been working in the construction division of Weeks since 2005. Just a little background for everybody who isn't familiar with Weeks Marine. Uh, we're currently entering our 102nd year in business. Our main headquarters is in New Jersey. We have satellite offices in Louisiana and Texas. Um, as you can see on the slide here, Weeks has uh, three key divisions. Our dredging, dredging division, which is uh, capital and maintenance, shoreline protection type of work. Uh, construction, which uh, is what I'm in, and we do infrastructure, transportation, environmental. And then there's uh, marine services, which uh, does heavy lift, salvage, and chartering. So then we also have uh, three subsidiaries, McNally International, they're based out of uh, Canada and they specialize in tunneling, uh, Healy Tibbetts Builders in Hawaii, and they handle uh, the full spectrum, they're kind of like a smaller Weeks Marine out in the Pacific, and then we have North American Aggregates, who's a uh, clean fill and aggregate supplier uh, in New Jersey, and they, they supply the, the region. All right, thank you, Travis. With that in mind, I'm gonna go ahead and start up a video and kind of give a, a quick background on some of the projects or one project that you're working on and we talked through uh, earlier, so just bear with me one second. Travis, can you take a look at this video and tell us a little bit about this project and what we're seeing here? Yeah, Shay, so this is a, a project where we're building a berm for shore protection and we're using two of Trimble's off the shelf systems, the clamshell and the marine excavator. On the right side of the screen, you can see that the operator has built up a pile just above the water surface, and that gives him a visual reference point. And now he's gonna swing back over and grab another bucket, and you'll see that he's, he's working back towards the established portion of the berm on the left side, and the excavator is there shaping the berm and placing the excess material ahead of himself. I see, okay. Um, being that 
Wix has been around for over 100 years. Can you describe how you used technology before you started using these types of systems here? Uh, as as for what we've done in the past, Shay, uh, I don't really know. I've I've never done any of this type of work without technology, and I've been here for 15 years. Weeks has always been receptive to using the technology since I've been with the company, and that allows us to pursue and complete the work with higher technical demands and tighter tolerances. Uh, things like painting cables, for example, have become more of uh, sanity checks for our systems, and they're not our primary means uh, for confirming bucket grades. I understand. Um, well, tell us about the decision criteria you use to select Tremble and Measuretronics. So, uh, Weeks, Tremble, and Measuretronics, uh, those relationships all, all predate back when I started with the company. Um, we, we know Tremble and uh, the hardware and software packages work in multiple applications. With that single platform, uh, the operators can swap seats, the field engineers can swap assignments. Uh, the software can be tailored to both the user and application. Uh, we, we've moved these, the same software sensors and receivers to all different kinds of things, rock placement, pile driver, pile templates, et cetera. I see. Okay. Okay, Travis, looking at this video here, can you describe what we're seeing? So what you're seeing here is uh, identical to the video that we just saw. This is the operator's view on, on his screen. And you'll see that he's going to swing over to his left, and he's going to place near this uh, bold line, kind of towards the the top of his screen, and that's that's the center line of our our berm. And uh, so he'll he'll lower it down, and you'll see the bucket open. And TMC has a diking option where, when the bucket opens, it'll automatically build the surface for us. But since we're uh, we're we're bringing up the surface above the water line, we're we're not. We're not using that in this application. Uh, the operator oh. keeps on placing around in the, in the limits there, and uh, he he's got a color scheme that allows allows him to know when we're uh, when we're above grade or or at grade, which is the which is the green, and then the red is obviously uh, below grade as as we update the surveys for him. Okay. Okay. And Travis, looking at this one, this is the continuation of the first video with the excavator, correct? Yep, that's 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 exactly what it is. So this is this is focusing on the excavator now, and uh, so you can see the the plan view up at up at the top, um, similar to the clamshell operator, and uh, you have the the green, the gray, and the red, and then down below on the lower part of the screen, he has a, a profile, and you can you can see the red and the green lines, and those those are our allowable uh, tolerances, our plus and minus tolerances. So uh, he gets up to the top of the slope here, you'll see, and then he swings to his left, and he and he places the excess material out ahead of himself. How has the uh, system been received by the operators on the job site? Uh, pretty good. I mean, they they uh, they're always a little skeptical. It's their their first time using something like this, but uh, o over time they they get used to it. They they get going a little better, and you know, eventually, before you know it, they they have input on on how they want to see their screen, um, and and maybe even some some input for uh, the Trimble guys and Mesotronic on how we want to uh, we want to make the system better. I see, and so the ramp up time has been pretty quick for some of these uh, experienced operators. Then, yes, sir. And tell us about what we're looking at here. This is uh, another clamshell system that we have on the project. It's uh, more of a conventional crane, a Lee Bear uh, 895. And you'll see here he's going to swing over, and uh, he's going to kiss the lips of the of the bucket at the water surface. And when he gets there, you'll you'll see on the right side of the screen we have the the incoming uh, tide gauge up at the top, and then on the left side is is his uh, bucket elevation, and you can see that they're only four hundredths off. This is a, a best practice that we do at the start of the shift and uh, uh, periodically throughout the shifts just to, just to check ourselves. All right, so we're back. Um, thank you, Travis, for helping me with that. I think, I think now that uh, we have that in place, uh, we're going to introduce Lou Nash with Metrotronics and kind of introduce uh, Metrotronics and also Lou's going to tell about how some of the 
custom solutions they've come across to help you guys with some of the projects that we've done. Okay, thanks, Jay, and uh, thanks everybody for for dialing in today. Um, so yeah, we don't uh, Mesotronics, We don't have quite the, the history that Weeks Marine has, but yet uh, we have we have a pretty good pedigree. Um, we're in our 23rd year now. Uh, our offices are in uh, Florida and Washington, um, giving us the the opportunity to service both coastlines. Um, we're kind of unique. Our our total focus is on marine marine applications. So not just the positioning side, uh, but also the uh, the underwater imaging and, and and at times even ROVs and and things like that. Um, but I think one thing too that makes us pretty unique is we're real hands-on. Um, so everything that we put in the field, everything we sell, we we own. Um, and with that, our guys become uh, very familiar, like I said, very hands-on. They know how to apply it to, to the different applications. And with that, it, uh, you can see at the bottom of a couple of a couple of survey vessels that we maintain, one on each coast, and that lets our guys go out when we're working on the, the sonar aspects of things. And uh, we do uh, quite a bit of beta work, uh, uh, customer demos, trainings, things like that. So here's here's our typical workflow. We get a we get a call from a customer, um, somebody like Travis at a, at a company like uh, like Weeks Marine, and they've got a certain task to complete. They they identify certain specifications, and then they say here's here's the types of machines we want to use. Um, so we'll we'll talk through that, and you know we always want to know what uh, what is the machine configuration, what are the tools, and from that we'll look at uh, okay what's What's going to move? What do we have to measure? How are we going to capture that measurement? And then how are we going to bring it into the into our TMC software? So in this particular uh, project, uh, Travis had called in. Um, Weeks Marine had had two challenges on a on this project. One was that they were going to be placing stone um, underneath of some very low bridges, a number of very low bridges, and they knew they were not going to have uh, visibility to the to the satellite constellation. Uh, uh, GPS, GNSS. So, um, so that was their first challenge. And the next challenge was that these bridges, uh, they they knew from the constraints of piles and such that there there wasn't going to be uh, much room uh, in excess of of the barge itself to bring a survey boat in and out. And they were concerned with having to move the barge to to get their their update surveys. And they were they were looking for a, a means to mount a. a a sonar directly to the barge. So with that, you know, the first, I guess first I'd like to make note of the, the time here, the, the date of this was November of 2015, you know, so uh, over five years ago. And uh, the uh, the thing to point out is we're, as we're solving the, the first problem they have, the first issue, the lack of GNSS coverage um, if you look to the right here, the, the, the means we went about that was a uh, Trimble Robotic Total Station and a Teledyne Marine uh, gyroscope. Um, so to me, it's kind of interesting. That's a uh, this is all kind of a, a, a precursor um, into the uh, you know the 2017 uh, partnership between Teledyne Marine and Trimble that Shea referenced, and it just kind of shows the the natural synergy here of how things go together because. We have Trimble, we have Teledyne, and we have Medtronics. And actually, in this picture on the left, that's uh, that's Travis there with the with the jacket and, and no gloves. And then to the right there, that's our guy out of Florida, Nathan, that's uh, apparently wearing everything in his uh, that he had in his suitcase and and maybe some some other mitts. So with the robotic total station, we uh, same as with Shea on the excavator, we get a position. In this case, we get the position of a prism on a pilot house. And uh, from from there, we use the gyro to get the alignment of the barge. And when the barge is aligned, um, we can with that we can compute the rotation point, the offset for the uh, center of rotation of the the excavator that's strapped down to the barge. Um, once we get that, now we know where it's rotating from. We need to know which way the boom stick and bucket are extended and what direction it's in. So we we came up with this. This solution here, um, what what you're seeing is uh, a combination of proximity switches, which are just uh, um, 
little electromagnets and a combination of nuts and bolts. And what this did uh, between the magnets and the 90 nuts and bolts, we had a one degree um, angular resolution of the machine rotation. So now we know where the, what direction the boom, stick and bucket are extended. And from there, we revert back to the same sensor suite that, that she referenced um, on, on his explanation of the, uh, the excavator system. Um, so from there, now we, now we can compute where the boom, stick, and bucket are. And again, the, the functionality of the software lets us bring in now um, sonar imagery. So now we're going to look at addressing the second issue that, that Travis had for this project, and that's putting a barge, uh, you know, mounting the sonar on the barge itself. So in the same way that we computed a center rotation on the excavator, we're going to compute where the, uh, where the sonar head is. And then from there, we're going to use a mechanical pan and tilt system that uh, makes the measurements as as the as the as the sonar pans left, right, tilts up and down. It feeds those numbers back to us, and we uh, were able to determine uh, image the bottom. What we're showing here is, uh, um, and if you look at the upper left, that's plan view. That's a, a real high end uh, multi beam sonar survey. Um, done with uh, high-end sonar, high-end uh, inertial positioning. Um, bringing all that in, you can see the the bridge itself. You can see some cable crossings in red there on a you know a DXF as built of of the project. And then in the center, you can see the the green representing the depths. And the reason that Weeks is there is to place stone in in there and take care of some of that scour. Um, directly below that, we're showing our sonar image. Again, bringing it right into our software. And right, what you're seeing here is one one uh, ping of the scan, and in this instance, the uh, the sonar would would rotate out of the screen here and do a full 360 and sonify. Um, in the upper right, we're showing that with uh, again with the sonar offset, we can we can use all the uh, inputs, all the sensors, and geo reference the pings in the proper place. So what you're seeing there. Um, and from the barge, uh, the little brown speckles, those are some of the, the pings of the, the sonar blending right into the existing surface from the, the original survey. Um, and then from there at the bottom right, the same two reference surfaces that Travis referred to earlier, you know, their, their tolerances. We've got now, uh, um, we, we know where the excavator is, we know where the bucket's at, we know where the sonar is pinging. Everything is all in one world. And what that lets us do is, and sonify the bottom. Um, it'll show the operator in, in real time uh, where he's got high spots, where he's got low spots. So as Shea said, before he spuds up and moves, he can move the bucket back, knock down the high spots, and fill in the low spots. So that, that does give us true eyes underwater. Um, the, the end goal being that the, the barge is uh, never going back to, to fix one of those gotchas that Shea referred to. It's, it's always moving forward. And here, just real quick, how it comes together. This is pretty amazing graphic if you if you really understand what's all going on here. But we're we're insonifying the the teeth of the bucket. You can see some pings on the on the teeth of the bucket and along the bucket as well. And now here again, Shay mentioned the operation, you know, the situational awareness for the operator. But here is that cable crossing. If you look at the the red arrow, that is the cable crossing that was represented in the DXF file. Um, but now, uh, you know, if, if, if need be, we can create avoidance zones to make sure the, the bucket stays away from, from such an object. Or, or if he was in some kind of a deconstruction mode, he knows where that's at now. So he could certainly reach in and, and pull that cable out. So it, it does, again, truly give them the eyes underwater. So just kind of wrapping it up, looking at a couple more projects real quick. The, uh, you know, the, the title here is that problems equal opportunities. Um, going back a bit in time, uh, you know, Henry Kaiser, he's a late American industrialist and shipbuilder. He he had a saying that he said pretty much uh, problems are just opportunities and work clothes. And uh, myself, while I was uh, serving in the Navy, they would just tell us that, uh, you know, problems were just a, another opportunity to excel. So I think you can see there, that's a, a consistent message that, uh, you know, things get hard on the water. There, there, there's problems on the water. 
um, and problems and challenges. But our guys here at Mesutronics, they, they really thrive on those challenges. We like to get that phone call. We, we go to the whiteboard. We, we do our feasibility um, studies. If, uh, if it's feasible, we, we, won't let the, we won't let a contractor talk us into doing something that doesn't make sense. But, uh, once we know it's feasible, we'll put together a timeline and, and a budget to, to pull it all together. Okay, so what you see here on the uh, bottom left is another uh, custom solution that we we'd created. This one dates back to about 2017, um, right at the time that Trimble and Teledyne were uh, completing their strategic partnership uh, agreement, putting that in place. Uh, the contractor came to us uh, really wanting two things. Um, they wanted to uh, find a way to reduce exposure of their crews um, as they were placing piles, uh, you know, being in the small boats below the below the pile, making measurements and such, they wanted to reduce and or eliminate that requirement, and then they wanted to speed up their their procedures for for placing piles. Um, so with that, we were able to go, uh, you know, under the the agreement of the partnership, uh, we were able to go to directly to the Teledyne PDS programmers, um, show them what we want, show them what we needed, and uh, they created this. And what this is, if you look on the right-hand side of the, the video, uh, the red the red represent the um, design pile locations in, in 3D. Um, the yellow represents the uh, intended pile that's to be driven, and the green represents the, the pile that's, that's hanging in the leads. Um, so we just tell the operator, look at this as a, a video game. Um, these are noodles. Put the green noodle inside the yellow noodle, and when you've got it there, you're using the graphics. Look to the lower left on the uh, on the left hand side, and you've got uh, numeric values that show you whether or not you're within tolerance. So with this, we're able to support plumb piles, raked, battered, uh, whatever. And uh, I guess overall, the the, the contractor came back. Uh, he did uh, cut his time in in half. In, in palm placement and such and uh, and with that you know did reduce the exposure of his, his crews under a suspended load. Okay now moving to the upper left this project came to us uh, the contractor uh, they had a requirement they, they had to move a bridge an existing bridge section of a bridge uh, they wanted to uh, ensure the you know structural integrity as it's moving so they had certain uh, key points that they wanted to measure the relative differences between them just to make sure there was no twisting or contortion or displacement of, of these key members, um, kind of point pairs, you know, A to B kind of a thing. So the contractor, the, the plan was to pick up the bridge, hydraulic jacks, move it a distance, set it down, measure, and then repeat. Um, but we came back and said, well, what if we just measured the whole time that you're moving the bridge? in real time and you don't have to set it down and pick it up um so they came back and said well can you do that and we said well we, we think so um give us a little bit of time here to work on it uh we'll do the feasibility study as we as we went through that we did find a couple of things in the in the software that needed to be addressed but again we were able to go to the uh well to the programmers at teledyne pds and they made some quick changes we came back we we mocked it up we got everything done uh, we mobilized, we did a drive walkthrough on site, and then uh, they ended up using using this solution. Um, but what you see here is it's, it's uh, you know, quite a bit faster than in real time. This happened over a, a day or a day and a half or something. But the designated point pairs are, are given, and there's a certain tolerance that, that the engineers had that they wanted to be alerted to. And you can see on the right-hand side the numbers in red that are flashing. Those are right there at the edge of, of what their tolerance is, but it, it's drawn their attention to the fact that uh, there's something they have to be mindful of and be watching. And finally, what you see here on the far right, this was a uh, demolition project. The contractor came to us. Uh, they wanted to swap out some of their some of the buckets they'd been using on the excavators for debris removal. They wanted to swap them out with uh, jackhammers, hydraulic jackhammers. Um, so the first concern was uh, for me was you know the sensors and that uh, when you think about it the excavator that's strapped down to that barge energy from from impact is going to come back in into that machine and 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 inclusive of that will be to the to the sensors 
Um, so I checked with Tremble. They said no problem on, on these sensors. Uh, again, that came from uh, development with their, uh, with their partners at, at Caterpillar. Um, so we, we made the changes, and because uh, in the software we can, uh, you know, draw the tool to scale, uh, we put the uh, the hammer in there to scale, and that means uh, at, at life size and in real time we're able to provide the guidance. Um, so then what you see here at the bottom at the bottom right, the uh, profile view, it, it lets the uh, um, operator guide the, the hammer tip directly to the uh, submerged caisson that they're demolishing in this case. Um, gives him guidance, otherwise he, he wouldn't see it because all of this is submerged. Um, the top view gives a, a 3D view of, uh, of what's going on with the caisson. We inserted a, a model, 3D model of, of, the, of the caisson itself. And as, uh, as the tool pass through, passes through any portions of the model, it removes the material. And then uh, in the middle there, the, the plan view gets updated in, in color, uh, the color scheme indicating when they get to the, to the mud line they had to, to, to reach as a final grade. At this point, we've kind of talked through the, the uh, officer shell systems. We have talked about custom systems, things of that nature. Uh, one question came up, do we have dealers in other countries? Absolutely. We have 60 dealers worldwide. Uh, this is an option for those who are listening from overseas. Uh, what we can do is based on your location, if you send uh, an email to marine at trimble.com, that's going to allow us to source uh, the correct dealer for you so you can have some additional conversation to figure out uh, how we can help you or they can help you with regards to a project that you might have. Here in the Americas, uh, my email is shay.griffin at trimble.com. Uh, we have blue underscore Nash at Medtronics. We have our websites here as well. Having said all of that, I wanted to hand it off one last time to loot for this one last discussion as it relates to the future of the, of the uh, marine industry. So Lou, take it from here. Yeah, Shay, thanks for that. And thanks for the opportunity to just talk about this real quick. Uh, um, go to this website, Get Kids in the Survey. Um, and what this is, it's all, uh, you know, based around young kids and, and kind of a, a STEM-based thing, just trying to, you know, uh, get them looking at science, getting them uh, looking at, at career opportunities. Um, so, you know, if you're interested, there's uh, lots of resources there. They've got posters such as this, coloring books, coloring sheets, comic books, all those kinds of things. Based Based for young kids, um, lots of opportunities for sponsorship. I mean, you can see here, uh, uh, Jeremy sponsors a, a, a dredge. Um, if you look uh, kind of in the center there, you can see our little survey vessel uh, we, we'd sponsored. That's Nick Beamer. Um, kind of neat, if you look at the upper right, uh, you'll see a compass arrow, all right? So if we orient this to north, um, just uh, I guess uh, west, southwest of there, you'll see the lighthouse with the, uh, some kind of a sea monster and uh, the sea monster appears to be bearing down on, on our little survey boat uh, nick beamer but that's uh it's not gonna be a problem because nick beamer's got uh tremble and teledyne on board so with that uh you know take a look here it's a worthwhile uh organization worthwhile cause and, and a lot of good stuff there so that'll be it for me and uh thanks everybody and thank you shay thank you very much and we'll hand it back to you warren hey. Thank you, Shay, and I want to thank all, all everybody with Trimble, um, and and your uh, your your expert and expertise partners, uh, Travis and Lou. Uh, we also want to thank the many attendees across the world who who uh, dialed into this webinar. Marine Construction Magazine is here to bring together industry expertise and experience. We are looking forward to another webinar in the planning stages in March. And I'd like to bring on just briefly Chris Smoot. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, again, I'm Chris Smoot. I'm the founder of Marine Construction Magazine. I uh, actually was the guy that started Pile Buff, if anybody's ever seen that, about 35 years ago. But uh, again, this is our first webinar. And uh, as you can see, technology is changing uh, on a daily basis. And uh, I just want to give my personal thanks to, to, to you, Shay. And the entire uh, trim organization for your expertise and the continued uh, improvements you guys are making in GPS technology and the marine industry. 
also to Travis at Weeks. And of course, uh, I've been in this industry again 35, 40 years. And when it comes to dredging, uh, Weeks is the go to company for that. Nobody has more knowledge out there than them. I mean, 100 years, that's unbelievable. Uh, and, and Lou Nash, uh, thank you. Uh, again, it was uh, one impressive and extremely educational uh, webinar. And uh, my thanks to all of you. And uh, uh, I appreciate it. And uh, again, I think this is going to be extremely beneficial to dredgers, uh, panel drivers, marine panel drivers in the future. But uh, thank all of you again. Thanks, everybody. Yes, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Thanks, everyone.